today I am submitting a deck list to uh, the Transformers trading card game Facebook group. Uh, they're doing a contest right now on how to use Windblade Combiner Hunter here. Um, I'm betting, if I was a betting man, I'd say that my deck list is going to be one of the more common submissions just because I think it, it it's the best way to get some synergy out of her. But this was a lot of fun and a cool opportunity for me to learn um, a little bit more in terms of trying to brew around a character that I didn't really look at. So let's talk about Windblade first. She's a plane, she's a specialist. 514-2 isn't um, terrible stats for 12 stars. It might be a little on the lower side. On the plane, if you flip to this mode, you get to reveal the top card of your deck. If it has vital icons of at least two different colors, you can play it. On the other side um, is where she gets her Combiner Hunter name. Uh, when this attacks an enemy that is a Combiner, uh, each of your characters gets Pierce 4 until the end of turn, which is nice for a big wheel turn. And I, I do love that Windblade art that is uh, Combiner Hunter Windblade from the SDCC box set. Um, she's not a leader, uh, and this mode is pretty niche, and the meta that we're seeing now... Uh, if you're trying to win, um, you're not planning on playing against a ton of combiners. So in thinking about Windblade um, and trying to build a deck around her, I thought, you know, this is a nice bonus if you run into a combiner team, uh, but this is where I should be looking at getting value. And what do I see here? I see that she is a plane, and I see that she synergizes maybe with um, a, a team that doesn't really want to transform, so you can flip her back and forth and a team that works in two different colors. And if I'm thinking about that team, the answer, and this is why I think my deck is gonna be one of the more common choices, seems pretty obvious. Uh, we would be talking about the Airstrike Patrol. I think people are pretty familiar with the Airstrike Patrol at this point. Um, I know uh, Mark Kinney and Adam Bixler have had a lot of success with them. They are very strong. Uh, these three planes, they're all planes, um, they synergize with their leader, uh, or I guess he's technically not a leader, but their uh, uh, lord, Tailwind. And Tailwind's thing is that uh, every time you flip a green pip, your airstrike guys get plus two, plus one until the end of that fight. Uh, so you want to be flipping green pips, which means you'll probably be playing a lot of double pip cards, maybe blue greens, white greens, orange greens. So that's where I'm thinking, oh, I could play those cards off the top of my deck if I seed my deck with it. So this is my 25-star main lineup. I'm running four planes, um, and the intention here uh, is to play it similar to other Airstrike decks built around like General Optimus, um, Springer, other, other decks where Windblade's there to flip and flip back every turn to try and play extra cards off the top, get a little extra action economy because I don't really need to transform these guys. Turn one, you generally swing Night Flight into something that you can hurt. Turn two, you swing Storm Cloud. Um, the goal would be probably uh, swing Windblade next, because really in this setup, Tailwind's where you get so much value. If you're playing against another aggro deck where they're popping your guys one and one while you're popping theirs, um, then maybe you, you swing someone else first, but I feel like swing, tail, or swing Windblade since she can eat an attack um, and then save Tailwind for last if possible. Um, I think that's it about the lineup. Uh, we don't really care about their alt modes. You're not playing these off the, the back, their abilities. Um, Tailwind, you flip him uh, maybe when, well, actually you will flip him when these two are dead um, because he's just going to get a static plus two, plus two instead of a plus one, plus one. Um, that's just, you know, strictly better. Other than that, you're flipping Windblade every turn to see if you can get something off the top. So let's go ahead and move our bots out of the way and talk about our deck list. Uh, so in terms of battle cards, uh, I'm running a, a kind of a mixed deck, mostly aggro still. So a lot of the standard aggro tools, three grenade launchers, two erratic lightnings, three backup beams, because in this deck list, again, they go from being blue greens to double blues, double oranges that you can pick up if you need to. Um, one enforcement batons, three sturdy javelins. I am running three different ranged characters, so I'm expecting to get some value out of those guys. And that is kind of my weapon package. 
Um, so I'm running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weapons. Of those weapons, um, four of them I can play off the top of my deck if I get lucky with Windblade. The same four I can pick up on a flip. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I will be able to play a weapon each turn um, with this setup. Then we can go into the equipment, or the, the armor. Uh, three improvised shields to get damage out. Uh, one sparring gear. I have enough blue pips in this deck where I think I actually get some value out of getting some toughness on. Uh, my strategy when I've tested this out is the sparring gear goes on Tailwind. I just want him alive as long as possible. Um, that's that's just where I'm going to be putting it. Uh, and if I get it early, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, three bashing shields. Again, these are four armors that I can play off the top with Windblade. And in addition to that, they are equal to three oranges, one blue, as long as Tailwind's alive. So I'm pretty happy there. Then I got a pocket processor, um, mostly because I don't have a ton of card draw on the deck. If I can play it and put it on Windblade, that helps her become more of a target um, when people probably want to focus on Tailwind or, or something else. And drawing a card each turn at the start of the turn is pretty nice. Again, a green pip, it is equal to two oranges and one blue. I'm running two matrices, or sorry, three matrices um, as a utility. Again, this is a card that Windblade can play off the top. The place it has to go is on Windblade. Um, this is mostly here just in case. I'm never going to play this on a turn. I'd rather play another equipment or trade it out for a green pip. But if I do flip it off the top, I can put it on Windblade, bump her up to six attack. Um, she, the other ability doesn't you know, go to anyone else. Um, but I think from my testing, having a blue orange uh, for my pips is just fine. Then I've got my pumps, I've got supercharges, I've got reckless charges, uh, getting the bold up to get those green pips I need over here. Reckless charge, normally that goes on Windblade because, um, again, she can eat the damage um, and she's swinging for 9, maybe you know 12 or 13, depending on the weapon. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. Then I've got a treasure hunt. I was originally running more of these because I was worried about finding my weapons, but I think I'm running enough weapons in this deck now that one is just fine. Three wedge formations. Again, I can play these off the top if I flip them. Uh, it is orange, black, green, which is equivalent as long as Tailwind is alive to three oranges, black, and a blue, and a green. So I can pick it up if I need to. I also like playing this card. I'm not running any melee characters. I can draw a card uh, when I need it, and you know it helps my card draw. And then the thing I really like is the plan one. I, I've been pl playing this deck casually. Uh, I really love playing this card, doing uh, drawing a card, planning one, and then flipping Windblade to be able to play that off the top. Um, you know, getting two upgrades out in a turn that way instead of uh, doing something else. I'm pretty happy with that. Three piece through tyrannies. I'm generally not killing anyone. There have been a couple turns when, uh, or a couple games now that I've played, where Nightflight or Stormcloud have one health left, and I'll go ahead and kill them to get two attacks into an important target, um, or to get around some sort of uh, secret action that I, I wanted to avoid. Um, but normally I don't play these, it's just there for the pips. Three focus fires. Uh, again, with the draw card draw that I have, um, sometimes I don't have enough cards in to get the focus fires, but I've been really uh, enjoying being able to play every now and then. I play a supercharge or something, uh, or, or play, sorry, not a supercharge, play a grenade launcher, um, play the wedge formation to draw a card looking for that third focus fire, and then since I played wedge formation, I can't play another action but I can play in a Focus Fire, Flip Wind Blade, and play it off the top. It, it's a little Christmas landy, but it has worked out enough that I think it's worth including. And again, uh, orange and green pips, good for the Airstrike boys. Then for my Disruption right now, I'm just running one Reprocess and a Smelt. Um, reprocess, I think, is a nice standard, hey, here's the upgrade I want to get rid of. Smelt is a card, uh, let me move that up. Smelt is a card that I can... 
uh, play off the top of my deck instead of my hand, which I enjoy. Um, but yeah, that is my main deck. That is all 40 cards. Um, how happy am I with this deck list? I mean, it's it feels kind of cheating to have a deck list that <laughs> Windblade's not that important in. Um, but this deck list has allowed me to pull, win games with Windblade. And in the end, I think that's right. We play a game to try and win. Um, when I am facing a combiner, it's super nice to be able to just switch to this mode and get a wheel turn in with her and Tailwind and just, you know, really wreck it. Um, but other than that, uh, flipping back and forth, doing enough damage with these guys, I think this is a solid, like, casual deck. I think bringing it to your casual night, you'll, you'll have some fun and win some games with it. Um, in terms of matchups, I, I think you just treat this like a, a standard four-wide aggro deck list. Um, it wins where... Uh, four wide uh, aggro and general optimist win just um, less so. I mean, it, it's not as good as the general optimist, which leads me to my sideboard. So we see on game one that they don't have any combiners. We decide to pivot and we switch Windblade out and we bring general optimist in. That's my sideboard. Um, you can, if you wanted to, if you needed to, you can go too wide. There's kind of enough stats there, I think, to go too wide. Um, but generally, after game one, you can switch out to General Optimus and not feel like you're losing anything. In terms of the uh, battle card sideboard, what I am running, uh, I found that with my flips and everything, uh, two hijacks is generally enough for me to avoid the versions of the combo deck that I have now played against. Um, this is a card that I was really torn on. Bombing Run, um, I was trying to make it work in main, but I found that just against other decks, there's enough damage going out that uh, one or two of my guys is dead before I get any value out of Bombing Run. I would only sideboard Bombing Run in against uh, decks that are running Armed Hovercraft. If you've got like a two tall that's like, oh, I'm going to Armed Hovercraft you, because uh, I don't care, then Bombing Run is super nice, and that's the only time I put it in. Um, the other thing I was looking at is War of Attrition. I think that would be just as valid instead of Bombing Run. Uh, escape Routes. I side those in sometimes when I'm still running Windblade. Um, just uh, if there is a Combiner team, I'll put Escape Route in so I can uh, have Windblade in this mode, flip her to this with Escape Route, then flip her back. Um, it's not always worth it, but uh, it is nice. And then it is super nice on General Optimus, um, just in case you find yourself in the wrong mode, just due to some sort of the way the play evolved, if you need to get him in uh, the right mode while still allowing someone else to attack or something. Master Plan is a card that every now and then I will side in with uh, while I'm running Windblade and see if I can play it off the top to put uh, pips in my deck if I find that my opponent isn't disrupting my hand a lot and I am drawing what I need. Uh, being able to plan those uh, improvised shields is super nice. And then of course I am only running 24 stars here so I get a free mounted missiles and that is always lovely. And that's it. That's the deck list. Um, I know I, I briefly talked about your kind of play pattern. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else really to explain. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, I am super curious to see what everyone else has submitted. I'm sure there are a lot more creative ideas than this one. Uh, but my money is, I'd love to hear Reckon Rolls uh, or, or whoever uh, the guys running the, the Facebook group when they put out their contest results. I'd love to see how many team lineups are this team lineup. Uh, because I feel like this is just a, a strong go-to. Uh, that's it before I ramble too much more. Thanks for checking it out. If you want to give Windblade a shot, uh, this, is, this is one way to do it. Have a great day, everyone. See ya.